What's up everybody, how is it going? Today I'm going to show you how to take apart your... No, bad. What's up everybody, hey listen, today we get rid of the smog pump. I'm going to show you guys how to do it with just the belt and not the relocation kit. But, you notice something on there? There's a new uh, cold air intake. I really didn't do anything. Um, and that's because the bottleneck, like I said, is here, not here. So it's going to get plenty of air up to this point and then at this point from here on it doesn't even matter anyways it hasn't changed one bit so this will benefit once we get the intake and heads on um and it's going to be temporary anyway till we get you know the turbo set up or whatever but for now it works um and it sounds cool and it looks cool but that's about all it does i'll be honest it does nothing in fact if anything it's getting heat soaked and it's making the intake hotter but anyways i got a decent deal on it i kept the stock stuff and uh, i'm gonna run it so I got this for about half the price of so this thing would cost new. It's Mac products, a cold air intake. Yeah, the filter's quite large and it's pretty simple to install. You just remove the inner fender, bolt the plate onto its stock location, remove the rubber mounts that are here, and then um, yeah, filter goes on from the bottom. Put the inner fender back on and that's really it. So not much to it. But we are gonna get rid of the smog pump. Why am I getting rid of it? Because it's serving me no purpose. It has already been bent and removed from the exhaust. So <clears throat> there is two ways to get rid of the smog pump. There's probably more, but the two I know of is to actually get the relocation bracket in the kit. That kit is just a idler pulley, basically. It bolts into the same location as your smog pump, turns into an idler pulley. You can utilize your same serpentine belt and um, it frees up the horsepower. Now, I'm not gaining anything from this other than maybe getting some more room out of the engine compartment. That's it. Don't expect horsepower. I'm going to free up some because it's not spinning the pump. Um, but the car has catalytic converters as well, and you know it does feed air to it. However, the previous owner had already crimped and cut, and the pipe that goes to the catalytic converters is already removed anyways. So I'm just going to remove it to free up, if anything, weight off the front of the nose and to free up the engine just a little bit so it can spin a little bit quicker without having to move some of the accessories. I'm not a fan of underdrive pulleys because it does rob power from the accessories you need. You'll get less spin from the alternator, less spin from the powering steering pump and everything else. So the way we're going to do it is to reroute the serpentine belt. So you can actually do this and get rid of the pump without having to add the bracket. To me that just adds more space and you're just kind of filling a void with another pulley. This completely eliminates it and um, yeah, it reroutes the the serpentine belt here with a smaller belt and hopefully this is the right size I did my research and did some googling some searching and yeah I'll show you guys um, what size belt this is if you can't tell the part number here it's 4060845 most of them have pretty much the same first number 60845 the 845 is the length that's 84 and a half inches long so you know if you're looking for a specific length belt you can always go by these last three numbers, if you were to measure one in a specific length. So 84 and a half is what I got for the car. I believe the stock length is like 90. So yeah, let me show you how this guy is gonna go on and actually remove the pump. Okay, so guys, this is readily available online. I could post a link to it, but it is pretty much everywhere on the internet. Um, so props to the gentleman who created this diagram. This shows how the belts are ran on an 88 Mustang, which is gonna be the same as my 86 here. So I went ahead and actually marked the rotation of the pulleys so you can get an idea. So this is the stock stock setup now with all the accessories. This is my car with AC and a power steering pump and a smog pump and the water pump and the alternator. So this is everything that is spinning right now. Notice that these water pumps on our cars are going to be reverse rotation. They are going counterclockwise, whereas most of the accessories, if you can tell here, spin clockwise. So this is a unique water pump to the five liter um, that is different than my Trinos 302 that does also spin clockwise. So how do we how do we get from here to here? Well, this is the route. Um, this is an 84 and a half inch short belt, which is the one I've received, and uh, we're going to route it just as shown here. Now most people look at this and think, well, you're flipping the um, you're flipping the belt on the other side of the water pump, but you are still spinning it in the correct location. If you notice this here, both of these are going in a counterclockwise rotation. That's key to make sure 
um, that these are sitting the right way. Now what I've seen some guys do is try to eliminate this and run the belt straight from the top of this up around here. Um, that's a bad idea because engine vibrations and getting on it, decelerating whatnot will cause your tensioner to just squeeze in enough and touch. You may get away with it, but if your belt's starting to get loose and wear, you're eventually going to rub here and destroy the belt and who knows what else. So don't do that. This is a much better way, um, so props to whoever came up with this. And um, yeah, we're going to give it a shot. First thing I want to do is actually remove the serpentine belt, which is super easy. We're going to try to wrap this belt on the same way that this is shown in the picture um, with the smog pump in there to make sure that's the right length. However, I don't think it's going to work. Um, I think what's going to happen with the smog pump here, this is going to be in the way. But uh, we're going to give this a shot with a smog pump on, just make sure the belt works and everything's good and if it does take the belt back off remove the intake and start unbolting the smog equipment one more thing I want to notice that it's important you have to block the head so when you move the smog equipment we're going to remove the solenoids we're going to move the pipes um, the hoses and the crossover tube from the back of the heads so the smog pump does pump air into the back of the heads or from the back of the heads no pump into the back of the heads and also pumps it down to the exhaust to pump into the catalytic converters to help the emissions. So getting rid of this will not affect my computer. Getting rid of the EGR will. Um, this is not going to cause any more problems than it already has. It's already throwing a code detecting that it's not seeing the amount of air that it, it detects or that it should see from the smog pump whenever it's running. So it's going to go away. Um, the code's going to stay. The pump's going to go away. Nothing's really going to change. Um, except I'm going to free up a lot of room in my engine compartment. And that's kind of the key. That's the goal. I'm going to get rid of some old old stuff and um, get space to work on it and change the plugs easier and whatnot. Get yourself an 18 mil. All right, left up on the tensioner. Slip the pulley off. And the fun part is rapid getting around the fan. off. Stock belt. By the way, this is a Continental belt and this is made by Goodyear. And it is the ribbed and cut. So these are supposed to be pretty good good belts. Uh, Continental now I guess is made by Goodyear. I got this on Amazon guys. It was like 24 bucks. So save some money. Get yourself on Amazon. Order it on Prime. Got it in a day and didn't have to wait on it which is cool. Okay, well thanks to my wife to help, I got it on, and um, I'll show you guys here. So I'll, it did fit, um, it just took some, it's a stiff belt, I mean it's brand new, and you can see the tensioner still got some room to play, but I basically had her hold the tensioner while I stretched the crap out of it over the alternator pulley and got it on. Um, Luckily, I don't think I damaged the belt at all doing that, but it is routed as such. You can see here, it goes <clears throat> to clockwise, turn around the, uh, the AC compressor, clockwise turn around the power steering pump, up through the water pump for a reverse rotation, back down the crank pulley for the clock clockwise, excuse me, clockwise turn around the crank pulley, and then up here, to a clockwise turn on the alternator and then underneath the tensioner. Let me show you guys how much room the tensioner has left in it. It's got a little bit of play, but um, the belt will stretch over time, so. So, I think it's really good. Um, it's got plenty of room up and down and Got me worried there. I almost went online and looked for a longer belt and found out I was going to look for this is an 84.5 inch belt and I was going to look for an 85 inch belt and it turns out they're hard to come by, especially in this brand. Some local ones had some, you know, the cheaper cheaper brands, but I wanted the Continental with a grooved belt in it, um, a little bit stiffer. So this is good. So it is actually running and on and the smog pump is now free. 
So, let's get to removing that damn thing. But first thing we're gonna do is just get this take off. Actually, yeah, let's just move from there. Okay, so we're gonna roll this together since this is the first time I've done it, but all this piping here can be removed. We're going to take these off and cap them. Um, these are all the, the actuators to the air pump. And the smog tubes in the back are going to be an absolute nightmare to get off. So bear with me and we'll see if we can at least get some of this tubing off first um, and get the pump removed. So I'm guessing what we'll probably do is release it here and here to get this section off and then release it from the pump. And that'll get. Um, the most of this piping out and it's a tight fit back there yep there we go so we're gonna move we'll move the pump <clears throat> the pump hose right there um, that's one that's attached directly to the pump and we'll move these back to and the vacuum lines go to an actuator here that's wrapped around and snaked right there, which I didn't like to begin with anyways. And then it goes, there's one, um, you know, here as well. So we'll be able to remove those, kind of trace them back and cap them off. And if I'm not mistaken, we could even remove the solenoid um, that these are going down into. Okay, guys, get yourself an eight mil. Help you out with this. All right. Now I'm going to keep all this so that if I ever have to go back to stock or if I sell the car, they got the original Ford emission stuff. For whatever reason, I don't know. I work in the dark. I'm Batman. Okay, I'm going to make sure to remove this back in line, which is crafty spinning around here they got going this is nice nice little touch okay, flip that over and let's see if we can take this off the pump yep okay so these are diverter valves um, it'll split the air between the uh, O2 sensors in the engine block. Okay. Look at all that room, guys. Headers. Okay, guys, get yourself a 916 socket. The top bolt here. Here's the top bolt, now let's head out to the bottom. I got the car lifted up a little bit here. And uh, we should be able to see the bottom pretty well here. So it should be 916 as well. All right, and it didn't even budge, look at that. That's a well-made piece right there, guys. As far as I know, it's only two bolts. There it goes. Damn good thing I didn't crush the GoPro. All right, so it's out. Let's go ahead and get this off since we don't need this anymore. Looks like it was nice and loose anyways. That's cool. All right. 
Look at this. That's lovely. Okay, guys, if you're anything like me, you've got a box full of spare nuts and bolts. Off other engine parts. This is going to fit just right. Okay, smog pump is removed. Room now, hey, look at that. I can get to my spark plugs. And the boots don't have to be in odd angles. So, that's cool. So why don't we just leave it like this? No, you can't. That's an exhaust leak. So, we're gonna get these off the heads. Remove this crossover tube somehow. I heard this is gonna be the absolute most difficult part in the planet. Um, I could definitely see why. So, um, there is another tube that goes out the back of the head. You see this bolt's in the back of the head here, and there's a block that covers up another hole where the exhaust port goes. There's one on each side. It's a crossover tube. And then there's a tube here. I think it's this one right here that goes back down into the, um, uh, to the catalytic converter. And like I said, that's already been removed. See? So, this, once I get it, completely free I should be able to get under there and uh, remove it but for right now we got to get this guy off the back of the heads okay I truly pity anyone who gets to do what I'm about to do which is snake a wrench on the back of the passenger side head crossover tube and this isn't even the driver's side I don't even want to think about that one yet Okay, I broke it loose with my half inch and a little bit of extension for some leverage. Uh, just enough room back there to put some leverage on that bolt and break it loose. And now I'm going to switch to the baby wrench here. Get my thumb around it, I'm able to twist it now. Oh, fucker. I got it, I got it, I got it. I don't even care if it falls on the ground. Come on, bitch. Okay, that is one side. Y'all want to see something really funny? <laughs> it's back there though. I promise you that. You can get in just enough room around the AC here. There it is. Look at it. Right there. Again, another job where I need to put the camera down. Okay guys, I got my arm wedge back here. I broke it loose. And I'm about to pull it off. I feel the whole tube is loose now. It's leaning on my arm here. That is down there, guys. How you're gonna get a bolt in here is gonna be a big question. All right. Get the bolt out, hopefully. Okay. So it's off, loose, it looks like I should be able to snake it out this way, it's stuck on there. Okay, that's not the end of it, um, the tube is out, so that is cool. Now. You have to worry about blocking the heads, and um, they, you can put a bolt back here, but I guarantee you these are going to be filled with carbon. I'm trying to feel my finger here, and it's hard to see. Let me show you how these guys work. If you look at the back side, okay, if we look at the back side, 
This is typical, guys. Uh, most of these are going to be covered in carbon, but your bolt goes, you know, right here to the block on each side. And the carbon tubes right here. And these are absolutely caked in carbon, as I would suspect for a car this old. It's like this little hole there. So, what you can do is cut these, flip them, so that this side is actually in the, um, covering the hole up. So, flip them over. This side would go on now on the uh, passenger side. This would go on the driver's side. So, I think that's what I'll probably end up doing because I got a feeling that there's no way in possible, no way in hell, there's going to be any way to get um, the passage in the back of the heads blocked because if this is that much carbon, on the back of the heads, you and I both know there's no way you're gonna thread a bolt in there when you can't see back there, you can't clean, you can't get a tap in there. So one of these days the engine will be out and we'll be able to uh, tap it. Even better, we'll pull the heads off, we'll screw it. But um, I'm gonna cut these off. So purist, I'm sorry. should never drink any power tools. Let's move this out of the way. So, by counting the rings on a tree, you can tell the mileage of a car. I'm just kidding, I don't know. Seems like it's still sort of functioning. So, I'm going to clean the back of these off a little bit, and um, we'll use these to block the holes. I have to tighten it up, but it is finger tight right there. You can see it. Um, so you can kind of feel back there with your fingers. You kind of stick your hand back there, and um, you can feel where the uh, where the smog hole is. It's all carboned up with the chunks of carbon. And you can just pivot over, make sure you're covering it, tighten it down, and then we're going to get in there, get it nice and tight, and do the other side. Okay guys, I've moved the EGR, I guess they call this TAD uh, sensor, or the uh, solenoid, but I moved it out of the way so we can kind of see into here, which is a big shadow for my arm, no, which is the two solenoids for the, um, for the air diverter valve. So I went ahead and unplugged it, and I got all the lines unplugged here. Um, this one does go to the valve I suspected and the source vacuum line is right here and we we'll just need to kind of cap that so uh, we don't lose you know <clears throat> any vacuum anywhere and um, we'll go ahead and move this line I want to try to keep I'm trying not to break this so I can always put it back if need be All right, come on, it's stuck. Okay, there is one of the lines. And the other line would be here. 
goes to the bottom valve. So it looks like, and anybody here can correct me if I'm wrong, but god dang, this engine harness is in the way. It looks like this line here, the one that tees and goes off into this bottom line, we're simply going to remove this piece here, take the this bottom part, which I believe goes to a, um, a vacuum canister and connect it directly into this guy. So we'll be bypassing or taking away these two that went to the two solenoids. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so that's been done. This has been removed. So the T here is gone that fed the two uh, solenoids. Now we will take the vacuum canister. Like, I don't think it's even gonna be needed anymore, but just to not create a vacuum leak, we'll connect this guy to the end of that and complete the circuit. So I've got a just a piece here. All right, so that has been teed. And of course, I'm creating a nice shadow so you can't see it. Right there. It's been teed off, and we're going to stuff it below here. I'm going to reconnect the solenoids. Okay, so that leaves no open vacuum lines, and I'll go ahead and hook this back up. I'm gonna run the engine, put the intake on, and um, make sure there's no vacuum leaks. Okay guys, that concludes the smog pump removal. And whoever said that this is 10 pounds worth of crap is kinda of full of shit. I don't think there's 10 pounds here. I mean, pretty much, it's aluminum. It's super light, it doesn't do anything with pump air this is all light um, I do have to remove the tube from the exhaust still apparently it's still somewhat attached I guess I thought it was completely cut and bent but anyways um, I'll do that probably tomorrow but this is not gonna give me horsepower I mean seriously this takes nothing it takes nothing to my garage is closed on me it's 11 o'clock so this didn't give me shit for horsepower but it did clean up the engine department and got rid of some vacuum solenoids, so that's cool. And um, hell, let's make sure it runs. And then uh, I'm gonna go take a shower. Okay, so I did confirm that the driver's side plate is just off a little bit. There's an exhaust leak, so that's where I'm getting the exhaust from. So I loosened it up a little bit. Moved it over, retined it to cover the hole, and the sound's gone. So, uh, success with no vacuum leaks. Things are going really good. Pumps removed. And that's a wrap. So, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Click on my son's face on the corner. There's more to come. We'll be putting the intake on and um, throttle body, heads, and um, eventually a turbo. So, see you guys later.